Hi everybody, it's Robbie, and I'm gonna try something new. Let me show you, I am here, but I figured instead of watching me, maybe you can see the hummingbirds a little bit better. So if they do come in, we're quite warm right now. So they've been all hanging out in the trees. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna try to do a Q and A on my compost in place traveling system, I call it. And it's just that there's over 60 comments a lot of them are just comments. Some of them are questions. Some of them, you know, you, just ideas and different things. So I figured I would go through it and see if this works. If it works, I'll do more of these. And if it really works, maybe I can learn how to use my phone to do some live feed here. I usually use my tablet. I'm trying my phone today. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go through and answer them because for me to try to get online and type, I end up being there for hours at night and then I'm tired in the morning, of course, and I'm up till 2, 3, 4 in the morning trying to answer things. And it's not just the one video. Questions come in on all kinds of videos. So today it's going to be on the compost travel. And the reason I picked that one is it's the newest, one of the newer videos, and it's my favorite way of composting. This is why I picked this one. Anybody can do this. I think people should try it. You have nothing to lose. A video I did, I think last year, was the same concept, but it didn't travel. So when I didn't know where to put my kitchen scraps, I was dumping it in just the red tub. Well, that's gone. I'm, I'm plant, I've am I'm planted in the red tub. I've got some squash growing in there. I will now be using buckets with lids. By using buckets with lids, you now have total control of your food scraps, kitchen waste, things you're pulling out of the refrigerator, even some shredded paper. You have total control over that. And once it's in a bucket, you know, you can get any size bucket. I'm using five gallon buckets around here. You could just dump it into something that, let's say you want to set up another compost in place container and grow in it. You just take that bucket and you dump it. It's already starting to break down. I like the small holes on the top, as I explained, so you don't get roaches. And somebody asked about that and I'll get to her question in a minute. You don't get critters in there. You don't get mice and rats in there. So this way you have control, but you're not throwing away all that food excess waste that's gold because it brings all the microbes and earthworms and everything. Um, Red Blessed, she was all excited with it and she liked my idea. Let's see, I used your idea on the tool in the garden last year and I grew zucchini successfully. Oh, no kidding. My gosh, the tool is, is just a wonder how much stuff I'm getting now. And when I haphazardly throw it around, sometimes it gets pulled off. But when I actually fix it, whether it's with clothespins or zip ties or something, everything's been going really, really good. So with a small garden, you can do this compost in place in a movable container. Why movable? So you can put it where you want later on. You can just move it around. If that plant is finished, it dies off, just pick up the container, move it to someplace else. Okay, somebody wrote, standalone self-watering irrigation video is great, does destroy foundation. So more of an initial technique, you probably could add food scraps in or even blend, oh, she went on and on, uh, and liquefy, um, preserve depending on materials. Okay, as this is, she's giving her, well, well roots, roots can clog. Roots, I'm gonna try to go through this quick or we'll be here for hours. Okay, roots can clog sometimes the holes. That's why I've actually gone back and everything is broke down beautifully. It looks like beautiful, rich topsoil. So I've taken that out and added in more food scraps. If it does block the holes, just take a shovel or pull it out and put a new one in. As far as blending and added blended food scraps, I'm gonna tell you something, I tried it. And I'm gonna say for me, no, I won't do it. You end up with muck, you end up with something that's really going to clog everything up and nature doesn't blend nature drops to the ground and that's it so dump it in the way it is now if you had something really really big a whole watermelon you may want to smash it up a little bit or something if it was rotten but as far as blending i won't blend i i did try it that's not to say if you were eating oatmeal or cream of wheat or some sort of cereal and you didn't want to finish it, 
you can dump that in there. But to take all your vegetables and blend it, it's a waste of time. I have found, number one, it's not going to break down really any quicker because I think the worms and everything like the particles. They get into the food matter and they break it down the way nature intended them to break it down. So for me, no, I'm not going to blend it. And as far as destroying the foundation, um, if you've got it on cement or wood, a compost in place container, I don't even understand that really. If you've got something on wood, it will break down underneath because wood will break down if you've got a wooden deck. That's why you should raise it a little bit. If you've got it on cement, it's not going to destroy the cement. It shouldn't. And if you've got it on soil, there's no foundation to worry about, so I wouldn't worry about it. So, as But as far as the container, I'm putting... This video is about putting containers inside containers. That's why you can use cottage cheese containers, yogurt containers, bigger buckets. You want to use a flower pot and put a big heavy plate on top. Whatever way you want to do it, that's what this is about. So, I mean, all questions are good. And again, it's only my opinion. It doesn't mean I'm right or wrong. It's just I have tried the blended. It didn't work for me. Okay, we've also got a collected many containers, plastic bottles. Now I can use them. Okay, uh, Alicia. Um, yes, I, I collect a lot of plastic containers. This has been great. This is, this, I collect too much stuff. But that has really, really worked. I want to thank everybody who's given hearts and, and happy faces. Uh, Robin Williams. I love watching you and Gary Garden. My patio is so small. I have about three feet. And then it shared with a grill and a trash can. See, I put two storage bins out and filled them the way you taught me last year. All the while, I've been fortifying them with cups and layering um, compost. I've been trying to figure out the most effective way to do it. I was making tiny piles and turning the cups upside down. Oh, this is long, kind of long too. Um, I spread them out. She covered them with leaves. Okay, she likes this method. This method will work better. And this is why I started doing it. And it's just fantastic. The plants take off. You don't have to worry about digging a hole. I mean, you can because it works too. But digging a hole in your container and then um, putting it in a hole and covering it up. You're just going to open the lid. If you didn't put a flower pot on top or anything, just going to open the lid, drop in your scraps, snap it back. If you want it to break down faster, you can sprinkle some soil on top or some potting mix, whatever you want to do. That would be the only thing. But otherwise, you can just drop it on top because the next time you drop it on top, it becomes underneath and it just drops down. Remember, what's on the very top won't break down, but the very top is going to end up underneath at some point anyways. Even if you didn't touch it, it would break down and start to break down on its own. Yeah, this is working great. I, I've been going around the yard sticking containers everywhere, coffee containers, and the plants have just perked up. I'm trying to save a squash right now that shouldn't have been planted where it's planted. It looks like a spaghetti squash. And once it grew a big squash, all the other squash on the end are dying because the big one is pulling everything. So by putting some contain, I put one container in there. I might end up putting two. By putting a container in there, I'm hoping that it's going to feed the squash plant enough to get a couple more squash going. So it's it's just been, this is perfect for small gardens. Richard Freyes, you don't, uh, he's asking about, again, blending it, chopping it. Uh, he's actually talking about blending his leaves, grinding up his leaves. You really don't need to. If you want to, if they're big leaves and you want to grind them up smaller, you do, if you feel like you want to do the work, you can do it. Don't blend them. You don't want to make soup out of them. You want the critters to get into the leaves and live in the leaves and the wood chips and the food matter and slowly break it down the way they were intended to break it down. I mean, you can, you can try anything you want, but a lot of times all you're doing is making extra work for yourself. And sometimes it's not even doing it better. And let's see what else. I'm trying to go through all these. A lot of them are just beautiful comments. Uh, some people want uh, Jackie... Jackie Boxer wants to just run off and can't even barely watch my video. She wants to get into the garden. That's the way it should be. You should start to watch something and get so motivated that you want to run out there and work. And that's okay. Shut me off and go work. That, that's perfect. I mean, that's what makes you feel great is getting out into the garden. Eva, how do you keep flies from going in there and laying their eggs? Okay. I'm, I'm sure she's saying flies. Um, 
I don't worry about the flies. If it's fruit flies getting in there, this has got small holes. The fruit flies are good. And even regular flies, maggots, that's just like having worms in there. It's a good thing. Believe it or not, it's a good thing. And if you're getting so many flies, don't put it up against your house. But you're not going to get big flies with the small holes. Keep the holes small. And again, this is about a container. This is not about the open container. This one is the one with the lid on it. If you've got a major problem with flies, I would put a flower top on a flower pot on top and just make sure it's got a few holes because it has to breathe. If you water the flower pot, it will water the container because that container has got to stay damp. In other words, it can't dry out. Treat it as a plant. I don't worry about flies, but again, keep the holes small so you'll have less flies. All insects are actually there to do something. Karen Bauer loves the animals and wildlife. Oh, I love it. I do. I got up this morning and the whole deck was covered in baby goldfinches with their parents eating up my deck card. No, they actually, they were going through the seeds. They were so cute to watch. And again, everybody going through and, and thanking me. Okay, tobacco. If you're talking about cigarettes, I don't think you are, but if you're talking about cigarettes, uh, no, I, I wouldn't put it in there. I don't know what they've put in there. If you're, she wants to know if you can compost tobacco, uh, if it will hurt the garden. To be honest, I don't think anything really will hurt it if it wasn't too much, unless you're smoking, if you're talking about smoking tobacco five, ten packs a day, then it's not good for you, and I'm, you need to really be gardening a lot. But I think you're talking about tobacco. We have tobacco weeds here, the plants, and, um, we compost them. Gary chops and drops. I haven't really put too much of that into my garden, my tubs, but you know, I've got one in the front yard and I, it comes up and I just drop it in the tub so it breaks down. So I don't worry about that. If you've got a whole lot and if you're concerned that you've got that much tobacco growing in the uh, tobacco plant growing in your yard and you think it's too much, if in doubt, throw it out. That's what I always say. If in doubt, throw it out. I pay for my trash service, so they're going to get something in the trash because even if I don't put something out, I got to pay. So if you're if, if in doubt, throw it out. How do you get rid of wasps without killing bees? You're not uh, again. I you're not going to have wasps in these containers because this movable traveling traveling container will have a lid, so you shouldn't have any wasps. If you had a wasp nest. On your house, you can get special spray that will spray the nest itself. You, you, a lot of times you'll find the nests around and you can get rid of them that way and that has nothing to do with bees. But as far as the bees, again, we're talking on the container, the, you won't get any wasp in this container. All right, and then again, I'm trying to go through the questions one at a time and I see a lot of people making comments on how they're setting things up. So that, that is fantastic. Set it up whatever way will work for you. Not necessarily the way I'm doing it, but what will work for you. That's the whole idea. This is supposed to give you ideas and thoughts. And then you would say, gee, I like the way she's doing it, but it won't work for me. Wait a minute, this will work. That's what I want you to do. Make things work for you. Somebody was concerned about the weight on the deck. Um, it's the deck is holding up fine. The containers are not that big and they're not that heavy. So they're okay. If you have a small deck and if weight is an issue, you can fill the bottom because the roots on vegetable plants really only go down about, you know, that much, maybe uh, four or five inches. They don't go down. They tend, you know, that far down, they tend to look for more surface water. So you could, if you are concerned with weight, fill it up with styrofoam. I have done a lot of research on styrofoam and there is no answer as to being good or bad. I will say they use a lot of styrofoam in Australia and normally they don't do anything if they think it's bad, but you know, sometimes it's a necessity. And if something is a necessity, I'd rather have you grow something than nothing because getting certain other foods from certain other places will be far worse than growing it with the styrofoam. Again, it probably won't hurt because everything goes down, your watering goes down, and your roots are going up. And especially if you've got a compost in place traveling container on the top, the roots are going to gravitate towards that all the time. So if you're concerned about weight, use styrofoam that will lighten up your whole containers. Yes, that would be perfect. Paper will not. Paper will get wet. It will hold water. It will just get heavier and heavier. So try some styrofoam if you have to.
So many people just love this system. Oh, how can you go wrong? I don't see how you can go wrong. It's something you can pick up and move, whether it's a bigger container, like a five gallon bucket, if you've got the room to use it, or a small yogurt type container. I mean, you're, it's food grade, it's plastic. Don't worry about it leaching into the soil. It's not gonna get that hot. If critters are living in it, it's not that hot. If it was too hot, you wouldn't have earthworms and microbes, they would be gone. So don't worry about that. Like I said, the most important thing is to grow something. Somebody wants to know, they love it so much. Do we have a patent on it? No, we have no patents. She's from the UK, Susie Wakeman. No, we don't have patents. You know, Gary always wanted to pull a patent. He never did, but he kept saying, I'm gonna pull a patent. Then he found that it's a fortune. So no, no patents. I don't want to patent anything. I want people to do it. If it works, use it, go for it. I've seen people taking my ideas on different things, not just gardening, different things and running with it. Good, use it. I just don't want them to patent it because I want everybody to be able to do it. Okay, Colleen Grant, she wants to know if she made one of these containers and she left them at a friend's house, how long would it take to catch worms? That is going to depend on your friend's house and where you put it. If she's got a nice garden and it's damp and flowers and plants, she's probably got earthworms all over there. You could probably, to be honest, set it there and go back the next day and there'd be earthworms all, already underneath. So it will depend on the soil. I can set one out in my yard and the next day lift it and there's already earthworms underneath. So you would have to kind of check it and see. I would say leave it a week if you're, if it's a travel, you know, if it's somebody, it's not your next door neighbor, leave it there a week and then lift it up. And if you see earthworms, what I would do is you'd pretty sure that because the holes on the bottom could be as big as you want to make them really. So you would think that some of the small earthworms, the tiny babies have gone inside, but take a shovel, grab some of the earthworms that are underneath and do it quick, be ready. Be really, really ready because when you pull the top off, you know, I shouldn't say the top, when you pull the container off the ground, those earthworms dive down. You wouldn't believe, it's unbelievable how fast they can move. So just grab some of them, put open the container, grab some, throw them inside, and you've got your earthworms. But that's why I said, when you're bringing it home, if you're traveling, put the whole thing in a plastic bag at that point because they may be upset with the moving and try to get out. And if they're wrapped in plastic, it isn't gonna kill them for hours to be in a plastic bag. So leave it for about a week at that point. If it's your neighbors, you could go back and check it every few days. Uh, Wayne wants to know if my husband had a channel. He's been thinking of opening a channel and then you can all go and see it's blank. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't have his own channel. We have a channel, it's Robbie and Gary. Um, he works on a lot of videos. He works differently than me. He's got like a bunch of pieces of a whole bunch of different things he wants to do. And my brain is like a horse with blinkers. I want to be able to get it all done because if I have three or four together and I'm working on too many, then I forgot, well, what did I do in that? What was I going to do with that? So we kind of work differently, but we have the one channel. So no, he doesn't have his own channel. I mean, if he ever started doing a whole lot, then he probably would. And he also wants to know what kind of cameras we use for videoing. Well, right now I'm using my cell phone, my iPhone, <laughs> but, um, and it's an iPhone six, but in the yard, I love my HX 400 and that's a Sony camera. The videoing for the birds is phenomenal. I had a 300 and it broke and I was going to have it fixed, but here's the thing. The 400's got so much more for me and the 300 has a couple extra little features that are not that important. One of them on the 300, the HX 300, you can take photos while you're videotaping and on this one you can't. I don't usually take photos while I'm videotaping. And I like the idea that the eyepiece, the LCD will go off if you lift it to your eye and will go on when you take it away so it's quick. So I prefer the HX 400. That's what I use. Now gear, and also I can kick it in the manual because so many times I'm trying to do a photo of a bird or get a video of a bird. And if there's a little something in between, the camera wants to focus on this, not focus on this. So I can kick it in the manual and get it where it focuses where the bird is. And so that's why I like my HX400. The 200 is the one that Gary uses. He's got two of them. And that's the HX200 Sony. He loves it kind of he's kind of like me he's a creature of habit he's been using that and he enjoys it but he does use my 400 once in a while and the other camera he uses for videotaping is the cx 405 that's a real little one that's this one 
and it's cheap. Let me see if I can bring the, yeah, see, it's a cheap little camera. I really enjoy this camera because you can do so much with it. I can hook it up easily. He can hook it in his yard upside down. Yes, he climbs up, up the, that thing that's in his yard and he hangs it upside down and all that. It's light. It's cheap enough that if he dropped it and it broke, I won't be screaming so much. <laughs> No, uh, the other ones are a little more money. They're easy to come by. I have bought, I have to think for a minute. Yeah, I've bought all mine used. And then I bought one for my granddaughter so she could do her blogging with it. I love this camera. You can usually pick them up used for a hundred bucks, but they're not that much more uh, on, let's say, Best Buy. Best Buy carries them. All the camera stores carry them. It's still on the market. It's been out for a long time. But yes, it is the CX405. And I have nothing to do with Sony. They don't give me any money. I just, I like Sony. I'm used to them and that's what I use. But this is for some videos. The sound quality is better on the HX200. I don't have one here. I thought I, oh yes. The HX200 and the HX400, they have better sound quality. This is the HX400. And it is an amazing, amazing camera. It's got a good focal lens. You don't have to be changing lenses. There's nothing wrong with changing lenses if that's what you want to do. But it's not a toy and it does everything I want it to do. So my favorite camera, my go-to, is the HX400. But if I'm going to do a quick thing on the deck or I'm doing a DIY, then I just set this thing up. It's quick and easy. So that's it. Let me go put you back to the hummingbird so you don't have to see me. Of course, I don't know where it's so hot. They're hanging out in the trees. They'll, they'll come, and plus they have other hummingbird feeders around. I've got one on my deck. I've got, got them all over the yard, so they can go anywhere. I've got these other hummingbird feeders. I've been making. I've been having a blast making hummingbird feeders. And then the Orioles, they love the new feeders I've been making. Mary Davis, she had asked me about yogurt and cottage cheese containers a while back. And yes, you can use yogurt, cottage cheese container. You can use little tiny containers. It's still going to leach into the ground. If you had something really small, it, um, I mean, this is too small, but if you had something really small, this is my speaker, you know, if you packed it up and you're still watering it and it's leaching out the bottom into your plants, it's going to feed. It's constant food. That's, that's the thing. It's constantly feeding your plants. So any size will work. If you want to go larger, of course go larger. I mean, I could easily say larger is better, but some of your flower pots or containers are not that large. I've got cucumbers growing in a small flower pot, so I put small containers near it. And you can see they come to life. And yes, you'll see all the little spider type of um, roots no spiders, roots, going across straight into the containers. They want all that nutrients that's coming out. They don't care that much about the water, but they care about all the food that's coming out. So any size you want to use. If you feel you can go bigger, go bigger. If you can't go bigger, use small ones and set up a whole bunch of small ones. And if they break down and you check them, I'm periodically I check them and they broke down, you could leave it and add more or dump that into another pot or container that you're going to start growing in because that is the best soil you can grow in. And then start it all over again. Start the whole process over again. Don't ever throw any of that away. Even if it's broke down, that's now your topsoil. That's your mulch to grow in. That is everything to grow in. So many just love the idea. I've always come up with ideas. You want to hear stories? No, no, let's not do that. I'll end up with all the thumbs down. As a little kid, my mind was working. I mean, even when I wanted to raise hamsters. Oh, there's a real quick one. Less than a minute, promise. I was trying to build my own cages. What was I, eight, nine years old. I'm building cages out of wood. You know how well that went. That didn't work. Then I'm building cages out of anything I could get a hold of. Then I found the guy around the corner. Well, I didn't find the guy. I went through, a, I went through their trash and found big film canisters. And um, I thought, wow. I can use this from the movies. And I went to the door. You don't do things like that anymore. Went to the door. Oh, I hear helicopters. And um, some lady answered. I remember people said, you can't go to that house. It's haunted. I don't know why they said that. I, don't, I wasn't worried about people. And I said, I need to talk to the person that threw out all the film canisters. And she said, well, that's my son. He works for the movie business. And I said, I need to talk to your son. I was like eight or nine. And she said, well, he'll be here tomorrow. So I went and talked to him and um, 
I said, I need film canisters. He goes, how many do you need? I said, whatever you can get me. And he brought me this big stack. I was so excited. Then I could wrap wire, which I had, and put the canisters together. And now I had so many beautiful cages I built out of film canisters from that. And after a while, they would break down, you know, just from the urine from the hamsters. And even though you wash it, they break down. You throw them away and I go bug them for more. But I could build cages. I filled up my parents' garage with over 100 hamsters. That's a story for another day. I, I have lots of stories on that. But my mind was working because we didn't have a lot of money. Nobody's going to let me go buy all those cages. So I just had all these different ideas. And I think my mind, as you can tell, works real fast now. And my mind is always trying to think ahead. Doesn't mean it's right, but it's things I try out. I'm just slowly going through to see if there's questions I can answer. People are excited. You don't have to disturb the roots. You know, even if you did disturb the roots and dug a hole and dropped your compost stuff in there and covered it, it really wouldn't hurt them that much. But that's true. You don't have to disturb the roots. The roots are going to gravitate to these containers you put in your pots and your flower beds and wherever you do this in the ground. Gary told me he's going to take a bunch of five-gallon buckets now and he's going to put them all over around the papaya trees that aren't doing anything because this way he doesn't have to think about it. He just fills it up with leaves from the garden. You know what's really good, and I don't know if I mentioned it in the video, get some leaves from your garden if you've got kale or cabbage or uh, broccoli or any of, the, uh, any of that will work. Soak it and rot it where it starts to smell, and then when you start the bucket, dump that in. It really starts breaking things down. It's like pickling. You got all the microbes and everything in there. It's like your own compost tea. Just dump it in this new container you're setting up and it will just start to work right away and your plants will love you. Aletta Smith, she she's having a problem right now and I, you know, without knowing what your problem is, why they're not growing, I planted all my plants and totes, but they're not doing good right now. Well, right now could be your weather. It could be not enough water. It could be too much water. If it's not draining, make sure it's draining. And you want all those totes containers, no matter where you are planting, to make sure you've got good drainage. You can water them good, but you got to make sure they have good drainage. Maybe there's not enough food in them. Uh, you might have composted in place and it might have broke down because certain plants like squash, like tomatoes, they are heavy feeders. People used to tell me you can't grow squash and tomatoes together, and I believed them. Now I've got squash and tomatoes growing together where I'm composting in containers right in there. The main reason you can't grow them together is um, they both are heavy feeders. A lot of your plants are not heavy feeders, so you don't have a problem. You can just pile it in there, parsley, green onions, all that. But if they're heavy, heavy feeders, then they're all you know, fighting for the same food and there's too much competition in there. You've got enough food, they'll all do good. So I, I can't at, tell you what is going on because I don't know what you put in the totes. So the main thing is try putting some containers on top and composting in place with, I'm calling them traveling containers because you can move them and see if that helps. It might help. And again, it could be even the weather because there's a lot of things here that didn't grow and it was because of the weather. San Sandra H. wants to know if red wigglers are the same as earthworms. As far as I know, yes. They're, no, er, red wigglers will be fine. The, the earthworms and the, any of these worms that are living underground like that are not eating your plants. It sounds like you would think that they are, but that's not what they're eating. They're actually eating the food matter that's breaking down. So if the plant is dying, then it will continue to eat around the plant and eat what's breaking down. But as far as them killing plants, earthworms, red wigglers are not going to kill your plants. No, no, no. You want that. That's fine. So don't. I would not worry about that. That is a good thing. And yes, there's a lot of people that think earthworms are eating your plants. They're, they're not. They're eating the microbes and and uh, everything they're eating they're all working together they're eating what is breaking down is essentially what is going on i'm not going to get into science and technical stuff i don't even want to know that let gary know that he knows all that the the main thing is they are doing good and their pee and their poop the earthworms and the microbes and everything in there even maggots that all feeds your plants so don't worry about that you want that red wigglers are very good wow I don't know how long this was, but I am through on this one. 
So I think I've gotten everybody because a lot of them were just comments on how people were excited to try it and do it and use it. And I think that's wonderful. Uh, again, anything that you can take that I do, there's no hummingbirds. Anything that, of course I touched the camera so you don't see them and now, oh, they all flew off. Anything that I do doesn't mean it's right. It just means it works for me. And that's the whole idea of everything I do. If this Q&A worked out, I will try to do this again. Of course, I'll never be able to get to everything, but if I let it ride for a few days and then come back and then go through all the questions, if you like this, give me a thumbs up and let me know. If you didn't like it, don't give me a thumbs down. I'll just go by um, to see how many people liked it or make your comments. This worked out good. Or if it was too long, I'm gonna try to trim this down and keep the Q&A on this short, but hopefully it worked out really good. I can't see anything I've missed Everybody was, it was either praise or excitement or thanking and every, you know, everybody, you're so wonderful. You, you all make me feel so good. This is like, you're, you're all my friends and, and you're all, you really, it's, it's the most gratifying thing I can do and feel is anybody coming back and saying they're happy about something. And if you're not happy about it, it doesn't mean I'm upset about it either. Something that might work for me may not work for you. I do a lot of things that. People have told me in the past will never work. I did it anyways, <laughs> and it worked. So everybody has to do their own thing. So oh, let me know if this works out and then I can go through other ones. And then if I've got footage I can add in sometimes when I do it this way, this will be good. It's probably better than trying to do a live, a, you know, a live type session because not everybody can get in. And yes, they can come back and ask questions, but this way I can kind of could go through. And if I missed anybody, I'm really sorry. But I think I got them all as far as people asking questions. Like I said, tons of statements. So with that, sorry there weren't that many hummingbirds today. It's not today. It's the hour. They come in very heavily in the morning. First thing, crack of dawn. They're just ready to feed on everything. And then at the end of the day, before they got to go off and, and go to sleep, they're really loading up. And you're also going to see, this is not a hummingbird video. Well, anyways, you're also going to notice that a lot of areas that may not have had hummingbirds before may end up with more hummingbirds. And areas that had a lot of hummingbirds may not have as many because now that breeding season for them has pretty much come to an end. There might be a few stragglers here and there, maybe some of the younger ones. Um, they're gonna move around more. So if a female wants to go from one city to another, she doesn't have to come back. She doesn't have any babies to take care of. Or she could take her babies with her or her babies are probably well on their own. So they're all gonna be doing their own thing now and hopefully they'll be here after summer too, but they were here all year, so we'll see. Okay, so I think I've gotten through everything. Again, this whole video was basically a Q&A, maybe a few other added in on how to catch worms and then also the main thing was the traveling system. I didn't know what else to call it, so I called it traveling because it's portable. We were trying movable because you can pick it up and move it. So if you had a plant, you, let's say you only wanted to set up one system, but your plants can take the one system. You can set the one system up and then after maybe a few days, you can pick it up and put it in the next planter and water it and it will feed your plants. You don't have to make one for every single one if you didn't want to. You can if you want. But that's why I really like it because you move it around. And then if you left earthworms in your tub, that's fine. They'll live there until you bring it back. They'll, they'll find stuff to eat. And it's just, it's just been so good. Okay, so I don't want to keep make this long. So with this, have a wonderful day. I hope this worked out. I hope I got to everybody. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. Nobody wants to come say goodbye. Oh, there's a couple in the back. Way in the back. Ah, uh, you can't see it. There's one. Say goodbye. Oh, you are pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty.